Hi, this is David Orlovsky, and welcome to the Rabbi Orlovsky Show. Hey. I really got to work on the studio audience. Anyway, um, this is episode 15. My goodness, this is amazing. And whether you're watching on RabbiOrlovsky.com, TorahAnyTime.com, YouTube, iTunes, wherever you listen to your podcast, it is a pleasure to welcome you on board for this very special episode. And the reason this is such a special episode, I know you're asking, why is this such a special episode? I see Rabbi Olavsky is wearing a sweater like um, Mr. Rogers, yeah? <laughs> the reason is because this is an extremely chilled uh, podcast. That's the word that I learned from our guests who are going to be with us. This is the first podcast where we're actually going to have guests. And I want to explain why. Because this is Parshas B'Shalach, which is also Shabbos Shira. Shabbos Shira because of the Uz Yashir. And the idea of Shira is very special this Shabbos. Even though Chaim Kanievsky said that's not a real name, but it is a real thing. A Shira. We're going to talk about Shira this week, and we want to deal with it. But I want to share with you a very special story. Because uh, the Rabbi Olavsky show... This week is going to be adding a special Australian touch. I know, that's right. <laughs> Australia is a country and an island and a continent, and it doesn't end there. And I went there to speak. Uh, it took me 20 hours to get there. And I remember when I spoke the first time, I said, you know, there was a rub. I always used to speak for 10 minutes Shabbos morning. And one week he got up and spoke for 25 they said, Rob, what happened this week? So he says, well, I live 10 minutes away from the shul, and I used to prepare my drasha as I walked the shul. And now I moved. I live 25 minutes away. So it's a 25-minute speech. So I got up on Friday night, and I said, it took me 20 hours to get here, so I hope you have no place to go for the next 20 hours, because I've been preparing this drasha. <laughs> anyway, that was my opening Australian joke. <laughs> Anyhow, which I said in Sydney to an entire group of South Africans, Anyway, but, uh, but uh, I had the schus uh, to have a group of Australians who came to join me for my Shabbos meal. And it turns out that all Australians are extremely talented. And this particular group is like all Australians. They know how to sing and how to play guitars and how to write songs. And I thought it was so moving that I wanted to share it with you. And so I've mentioned this in the... A couple of podcasts ago that we're going to start bringing in guests. And so I'd like to introduce you to the band. Yes, it is a big deal. Every Friday night is a big meal. There's always lots of guests. They're all dressed in the best. Here I sung with zest, and everyone is blessed. By the Shabbos, Shabbos angels. By them, by the Shabbos, Shabbos angels. By the Shabbos, Shabbos angels. By them, by the Shabbos, Shabbos angels. Dishwashing ovens on. Music's playing, nothing's wrong. Clean it well, color smell. Oh, I love preparing for my Shabbos socks, Shabbos socks, silverware, white tablecloths, keys for locks and tissue box. Oh, I love preparing for my Shabbos. Oh, I love preparing for my. Yes, it is a big deal. Every Friday night is a big meal. There's always lots of guests. They're all dressed in the best. Samira is sung with zest. And everyone is blessed. By the Shabbos, Shabbos angels. By them, by the Shabbos, Shabbos angels. By the Shabbos, Shabbos angels. By them, by the Shabbos, Shabbos angels, 
Shall is hot, Mif is not, chicken soup, bon black in pot, kiddish cops, the kind schnapps. Oh, I love the berry for my flowers green, house is clean, table set, house serene, Mishbacha, my magazine. Oh, I love the berry for my Shabbos. Oh, I love the berry for my. Yes, it is a big deal. Every Friday night is a big meal. There's always lots of guests. They're all dressed in their best. There's mirrors sung with zest. And everyone is blessed. By the Shabbos, Shabbos angels. By the, by the Shabbos, Shabbos angels. Kugel rice. The cake smells nice. Crock bar chong, gonna taste the bite. Shabbos slap, gonna take the lights. Oh, oh, I, I love the bear and for my shabby clothes, hats and bows, stop there goes your weekday woes. Stop! Oh, I love the bear and for my shabbos. Oh, I love the bear and for my. Yes, it is a big deal. Every Friday night is a big meal. There's always lots of guests. They're all dressed in their best. There's mirrors sung with zest. Everyone is blessed by the Shabbos Shabbos angels. By the by the Shabbos Shabbos angels. By the Shabbos Shabbos angels. By the by the Shabbos Shabbos angels. Vinny Fogelman and the Australian Kangaroos. Yeah. Okay, well, that was an unbelievable treat. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'm telling you, I had this at my Shabbos table, and I said I would like to share it with the thousands and thousands of people who watch the Robert Arlovsky show every week. I thought, what a beautiful thing to be able to share on this Shabbos Shira. And so I'm here with Rabbi Vinny Fogelgarn, who wrote, composed, uh, you wrote the music? together with my brother Tani. Yeah, they wrote the music, they wrote the lyrics. Now, I have written lyrics. I can't write music, but I have written lyrics. And I can tell you that this is extremely complex. I mean, there are rhymes within rhymes here. This is really something special. How, where did you get this gift? Well, everything comes from my shame. I know, I know. But <laughs> I mean, have you always been doing this from the time you were little? Um, I can't recall what age I began writing songs. But I was quite young. I was um, many years ago. I began writing poetry and lyrics, and uh, I've actually written quite a few songs. I kept them very close, and I haven't put any of them. So out the real yet. question is, because this is how you know who a person who can rhyme. When did you start doing gramen uh, on Purim? Because you have to rip out those lyrics real fast, yeah. and the rhymes have to go together. Yeah. So so gram. So I also teach at a, at a school, and I write and we, I write a gram for every boy's bar mitzvah. And with the class together, we sing it, we each take turns, we write an original thing for each student. Um, a lot of gram in the family. A lot of but did you do this as a kid? A lot of improvised songs. So for example, at a Pesach hotel, I could I would get up and take the guitar and just make jokes, make them rhyme. And I started to realize... They have Pesach hotels in Australia? Yeah, yeah. Would you like to come, Ravilovsky? I can definitely... Uh, uh, I am available... Would you like to come? What? For Pesach. And but you got to bring my family. I was going to say the family must come too. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and so mine as well. Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> I need about nine rooms and about 20 tickets, but I'm willing to make the sacrifice of leaving my home to spend Pesach with you. That's rabbiolovsky.com. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> he has my number. <laughs> so, so, um, so, yeah, so they were sort of improvising songs on the spot, and people seem to really like that when you talk about them. So I had a Purim party, yeah. I got fundraising all for the community, for the youth, and I'd come in there with the guitar and some, some youth around, some madrichim around me, and would write songs on the spot about people in the audience, like, you look much better in the gray sweater kind of stuff. I did this to match you. I hope you appreciate this. Because <laughs> so, I'm a cool cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm groovy. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so it's a lot of fun. And, and it, we re I, I've always tried to use that ability to write songs to, to give to others. And I hope that we are able to do that with this as well. It's amazing. This is an amazing thing. Now, you wrote this particular song. You have to continue that sentence. Sure, I <laughs> That wasn't a yeah, statement. So, so, da, da, da. so it's actually it's an interesting story. So once Sukkot, my cousin, 
uh, Auntie Vivian in, in Bentley, Australia. She'll love that mention. So, so we went to Sukkah and she really tries hard to make a Sukkah that all the cousins come to. We've got various uh, levels of, uh, you know, yeah, observance and we all come together to Auntie Vivian Sukkah and I wrote these lyrics. I don't even know where it came from. I just, it just came and I wrote just it Just on the spot? Just Yeah, it was a very quick thing. Usually when a song comes, it comes quickly and I write it boom, boom and within a short time it's finished. You know, I have that problem. I have a problem where I make up a song on the spot and then there's no way I can possibly recreate it. How did you remember it? I couldn't remember these uh, lyrics like this. So and I've been studying them. Yeah, so... I just want you to know that one of the reasons I decided to do this is because I thought that, you know, Rabbi Benny was so impressive, I wanted to share him with the few thousand people who watch my podcast. And then I looked on YouTube and saw that his video has 30,000 views. So, uh, but I think they're mostly Australians, like Aborigines and stuff. So I don't know... <laughs> I don't know how many like actual most of them are going, oh Shabbos, go there, go there, oh hot mikvah, yeah. You should see the did we do the did you do remix? It's epic. Boom, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it's I think amazing. It, I think at least twelve of the people in New Zealand saw it and so you know we covered most of Oceania. Well, well, well. <laughs> should we throw in some factual uh, evidence? No. <laughs> anyway, nobody really cares that yeah, much. No cares. Anyway, <laughs> a lot of my audience lives in the uh, New York area and um, you know I grew up in Long Wait, Island, so, so, which is out of town. So where's New York? New York is, <laughs> it, it goes like this. There was, a, there was a magazine called The New Yorker, and it had like this, it says, here's New York, and it's like, it's like Broadway, and here's Fifth, and Fourth, and, and Lexington, and Third, and then it's like Europe. <laughs> you know, it's like, I thought, yeah, that's it. There's, a, there's New York, and then there's Europe somewhere in the distance, <laughs> you know? Right. Nothing else really counts to a New Yorker. So I grew up in Long Island, my wife came from Queens, and we, we lived in out of town. That was called out of town, Queens. And uh, for some reason, if you're outside of Brooklyn, you're out of town unless you're in Muncie. For some reason, Muncie is considered a uh, chalik of Brooklyn. And uh, it's slowly Lakewood. All of Flatbush is basically moving to Lakewood, from what I can tell. Uh, although I haven't uh, been invited to speak there in a very long time. <laughs> anyway, and I am available for Pesach. Anyway, so... <laughs> Did we just yeah. book you in? <laughs> so anyway, so you just... So how were you able to remember this song? You wrote it on the spot. <clears throat> yeah, so... so this song was written on, on Sukkot, and then, then a number of years ago, the South African uh, Jewish community and their rabbi got together and, and launched the Shabbat Project. Right. The Shabbat Project. And then we thought, what a good, what a good opportunity. Which is an unbelievable thing all mm. around the world. Amazing, yeah. And, and, and we've all heard it said every week's Shabbat Project. We've got to take a lesson and make every week special, of course, the heart of the nation, the Shabbat. And um, we thought maybe we could put something out for, for the, the Jewish world that might just be a little contribution because right. we wanted to give something. And uh, we wrote, we had this song, and we thought, perfect opportunity. It's it's the name of you know bringing Jews together and having a great experience, a positive experience, mm -hmm. preparing for Shabbos. And we threw in some of some educational stuff as well, like how do you actually prepare for Shabbos? You can't take oh, tissues. No, wait, wait, going back to oh, my question, right, you wrote this in the sukkah. Yeah. Now, when you went to decide to, I'm going to use this as the theme song for the Shabbos project. How did you remember what you wrote? Well, I don't know if it was quite the theme song, but um, thirty thousand people saw it. Yeah, so... Um, I've had videos that have had over 30,000 people watching. Yeah. <laughs> but not that many. So, uh, how do you remember? I guess, I guess, well, you write it down. Um, and you just, if it's a part, it's a part of your songs, a lot of, like, when you write lyrics and they're, they're a real authentic part, for, an expression from within, they're, they're a part of you. And if you write meaningful lyrics that you actually believe in, it's a whole lot easier to remember them. As opposed to... Do you, you ever hear of A.B. Rottenberg? Course. Avery Rottenberg is a icon. Next level. Um, Next level. In the uh, in the Jewish community, Jewish music, and uh, when I lived in Los Angeles, I was a bacher, and uh, he was married, living out in Los Angeles, and um, I was new to living on my own. You know, I would get my salary and I'd immediately spend it because I had no idea about budgeting money because I was a kid. I, food is always in the refrigerator when you were a kid, you know, and suddenly there was none, so I would drop by his house around supper time. And uh, his, his wife, was uh, Robinson, was always very nice to invite me to stay. And, and A.B. would come home, and he'd sit down at the piano, and he would just start to play. And I didn't recognize any of the songs. And I asked his wife once, what's he playing? And she said, his day. He was able to take whatever he was feeling and turn it into music. It was amazing. And at some point, this is what I heard. I don't know if it's true. I'm not Pesach Krohn. I don't check out my stories. But what I heard is he started putting a recorder because he was composing songs based on how he was feeling right on the spot. They would have turned it in. But I don't know that he, the reason he did that is because I don't know that you can always recreate the music of the moment. You know, there's so many things that you, you know, you, you ever hear that? You had to have been there. 
Yeah. To really appreciate it. HTT, ATT, I had to get the time. Sorry. That's quite all right. <laughs> Australian <laughs> stuff. Right, right. Um, so, uh, so that's, it's amazing that you were able to recreate this. This is really very special. I have um, made up things and composed things and words and ideas, and I forget them constantly. Constantly. It's, yeah, it's, it's, a sh- it's hard when it comes, when it, when it arrives on job. It's so jungsh when it's reached. That's the famous, the famous... <laughs> you got to concentrate. You're the Gra w- once had a particular cash and he was in the middle of Shemun Esri, and he got tens of thousands of terutsim, and he davened and he should forget them. It's because he didn't want them to come to him during davening. Mm. But uh, um, I have many things come to my mind during davening. None of them are terutsim to questions that I'm working on. You know, this is one of the big problems. Those of you out there, and somebody did write me that um, a lot of my audience also have ADD. <laughs> and um, I once had a student with ADD. I said, he said to me, he says, how many kids with ADD does it take to change a light bulb? And uh, I said, how many? And he said, you want to ride my bike? <laughs> and we both went. So, uh, so it's really hard. It's, it's, it's a challenge. So when you start davening, you know, you go, El okay, Avraham, Avraham Avinu. He brought Yitzchak up to Har Maria. It's by the Kaisel. I haven't been to the Kaisel. I haven't been to the Kaisel. <laughs> How should I go? Usually I park in the middle and I walk. But uh, I guess I could take a cab. I don't know. Is that, what was I saying? <laughs> 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 Until you can get and back where you are, like, your mind wanders. It's like for the, you know. I mean, I have, I have friends who could just sit there and horva and, and they, mamish, they, they don't pick their eyes up off the page. Yeah? I heard a, a story with the Manchester Rosh Hashiva. Um, where uh, I actually heard this from Pesach Prem, where somebody wrote something in the margin of his sitter and named to Davin for, and then he realized that he didn't ask him, you know, and he, and he came to me. He says, "I'm sorry, I wrote it in the margin." He goes, "What?" Mm. He says, "I wrote it in the margin." He goes, "I never look outside of the words." He doesn't even look outside of it. He just sees the words. So uh, yeah, well you, well, you asked how I remember the songs and how it came out to do this. So actually, when I was 15 years old, I was turning 15. I, I left Australia. There was no yeshiva high school. And I went to America to learn, yeah. and I, w- well, I went to, this is, could be a long, long Never story. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if it's, if it's embarrassing. Uh, you know, no, 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 no. I went to, um, to Yeshivas Edison, I went to Yaakov Yosef, IJJ, Yaakov Yosef, Yosef Echenstein, and, uh, and uh, I was there for high school from a sifta, and it was quite hard being away from home, quite Were hard. you teased because you're Australian? Yeah, um, there were, I was... <laughs> More than teased, um, there were eight. There were, I was the only new. St- I came in year ten, and all the ninth graders were there for year nine, and I was the only new kid in the class. In the class, and oh, but you learned how to do an American accent. Yeah, I had to learn right away. And so one year program, I think it was eleventh grade. He went to Los Angeles to fundraise for the yeshiva. I had a boy from LA he took us there, and they all thought I was from New York. I was like, that's pretty cool. If they think I'm from New York, and I'm really Australian, like, yeah. So anyway, fair him. So the thing is, um, I, I I was quite homesick, and then the yeshiva was opposite a cemetery. And that's not a joke. It's, it's still there. And, and it, it, you know, walking out of yeshiva at night for a walk with your friends and passing by a cemetery when you're really homesick, it's like, it's kind of like a bit, you know, bit, it can feel a bit sort of down and dull and some, 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 some hard times. So I would write. Um, and uh, throughout, throughout my years when I felt like I needed to connect, I would sit down and, like you said, Avery Rottenberg with, his, with right. his talented piano playing, I would try and write some lyrics and rhymes. Um, but like I said, we never really shared any of them yet. Um, they're all sort of cl- kept close close to me. But this for the Jewish community, for the sake of Shabbos, you know, the Medrash, the Gemara, per se, keeping one Shabbos or two, uh, or the whole nation would bring Meshach and David Bo, Meshach would come. So we thought if we can do a little bit, a little bit to get people positive about it, something to get excited and preparing for Shabbos, you know something? Um, one man actually told me recently in Shul, this song came out a number of years ago, and a man told me in Shul recently, he said to me, are you, are you binning a year of Hillel? And I said, yeah. And he said, oh, well, hi, my name is so-and-so. I want you to know that every single Friday I put your song on in my house. And I said, and I was so touched. I said, oh, really? Wow, is that for your children? And he said, no, it's for myself. And uh, he said, it really gives him a chizuk. So if I touched one person and now two, you might say It touched second, me deeply. Second, deeply. Second, second in fact, song. I've been practicing the lyrics from the song so that when the band all came together, I, I, I thought I was going to I thought I was going to sing along. And I did during rehearsal. And then they said, maybe it would be better if you just do motions <laughs> while we sing as opposed to you actually singing. Can I test you on the lyrics so, quickly? Yes, there's... No, no, I'll, I'll start. You finish, okay? You ready? Okay. Kubel rice. The cake smells nice. Yes, it does. Crock pot chilling, got to taste the bite. Shove a slap. Got to take the lights. Oh, I love preparing for my... Well done, Rabbi. Shove his clothes. Hot symbols. Stop, there goes your weekday woes. Stop. 
Oh, I love a pair no, no, no. of... Oh, I'll finish that. <laughs> just stop. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the guys just get... In telegrams, they didn't have punctuation. So you used to write a line and then you write stop, you know? So a guy says, oh, I got a, I got a uh, telegram from a fan. What does it say? Stop. <laughs> That's it, just stop. Anyway. <laughs> Tough crowd, tough crowd. <laughs> now, but this is not, this is really, this is a hobby. This is, this is something you do on the side. This is all the shame shemayim. Really? Yes. yes. Really, what do you do? I work as a high school rebbe. I teach at a school. Um, I, was, yeah, I also work with the youth in Melbourne uh, in the capacity for a few years as a youth director. I'm currently studying as well, like education and well-being, and with the goal of obviously impacting more Yidin, if we can. Um, very blessed to be living where I grew up mm -hmm. um, and sort of I suppose to find a job in the same community where I was raised and come back home and give back to the community it's very special and um, it's been yeah it's been quite a, quite amazing I it, actually it learned is, to the most amazing thing because you know the Chazal tells us Navi Biiro. so I went out to Los Angeles I, when I got involved in NCSY I had a chapter there and they offered me to be West Coast Regional Director they offered me a lot of different regions but I knew I grew up in Long Island yeah. and I wanted to go back to Long Island and it was so hard because... Yeah, they would know you. And yeah, yeah. When, you know, you're a kid there. You grew up over there. They have to go in and, and now have an impact. So. Yeah, I once heard it was... I think it was a reservoir. I hope it was a bit left. doesn't make it. Somebody. Yeah, one of There's a rule in my podcast. Say whatever you want. <laughs> in Ursa Mia. None of my people are going to... Although I do have somebody who always checks and writes back okay. and says, you know, it's called Cracker Jack, not Cracker Jacks. <laughs> that wasn't the year of the uh, Gettysburg Address. You know, so There's somebody who's there to keep, uh, keep an eye on me. I want to... Try to keep me on the straight and narrow. One of the Ursa Mia rabbis said that they, they re refer to it as the Eagle Hazahov Syndrome. We have all these great gedolim there, and you go and get an outsider kind of thing. They're trying to draw a message from that. But anyway, um, I never really dreamed or, or sort of thought that that when I came back to Melbourne that I would be, I would end up staying there. I was actually living in Eretz Yisrael, and I still have a little bit of amount of tightness in this world. I have a little bit of a not a grudge, but like you know, like you kind of owe me something, Rabbi. Uh, because because <laughs> against me? Yeah, big time, big time. Can I can I put this out there for the public? Is it okay? You get Whatever, in line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to come after me, you're going to have to get line. <laughs> so, um, I'll just tell you what my brother used to say. He says, you better kill me with the first bullet because you ain't getting the second shot. Uh, anyway. Uh, I thought that was like <laughs> that was a sneaky topic change or something. That's <laughs> no, right. No, no, so, <laughs> so, um, I don't want to interrupt. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so um, Reminds what, me of a story. Go ahead, go for it. You know that joke, knock, knock? No. Yeah, very funny. <laughs> knock, knock? Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting. No. Uh, don't tell me that that one. Come on. That's like great too. I'm going to tell you a joke. You start. <laughs> Number 33. Nice. You know that one? <laughs> yeah, but you don't know how to tell a joke. Uh, <laughs> okay, go, 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 go. If you wouldn't interrupt me, I'll go tell a joke Shh. anyway. I've, we've lost the entire audience because they all have ADD like I do. So. Is the camera on? <laughs> yes, it is Wait, indeed. Oh, no, okay. Yes. So what are we saying? This is going on that big screen in uh, Times Square, you know, where there's uh, okay. being advertised. <laughs> Yes. By the way, for those of you who are wondering why there is a minimum amount of Torah content this week, it's for two reasons. Because I felt like it. That's number one. And the other reason is that this is actually being filmed. This is pre-recorded. This is being filmed on Nittelnacht, and we're not really allowed to learn Torah. So I'm being as careful as I can to observe that. I, all the other times when I observe Nittelnacht, it's a gazera. Anyway, so <laughs> you were saying. So I, I traveled across the world. Um, I know you'd prefer if I brought you to, to Australia, but I. I was. I, yes, I was. Were. I went to Australia. Yeah. <laughs> I, sp I, I spoke. I spent almost a week in Sydney. I spent three. I spent two days in Melbourne, and I spoke more in Melbourne than I did an entire week in Sydney, because. Uh, I, was, I was there. <laughs> Dr. Lanzer, who brought me out to Melbourne, is relentless. <laughs> and I love him dearly, don't get me wrong, but he's so L'Shem Shemayim, he's under the impression that other people are as well. <laughs> and that's not always true. <laughs> I was raised to take it easy. Anyway, if uh, they want me back in Sydney, let me know. Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> I practiced my, South, I said my, my Australian accent, I went to Sydney and everybody there is South African. <laughs> I yes. can't believe. Oh, no, I do, of course. Uh, absolutely. Yes. So, sure. um, so, <laughs> so I traveled across the world uh, with my wife, and we came to. We we packed up after we got married in Australia. We came here with the 
really did set on on, on growing and going to Urla Gurla. We got into Urla Gurla, our Samaritan's program for, yeah. for you know, leadership training, and it was a fantastic experience. And one of the hardest things for us was to accept that <sighs> Maria Lovsky just stopped teaching at Urla Gurla. So you owe me two years at once a week. Let's work this out. <laughs> <It's how many laughs> I, I, got, I went to speak someplace once, and someone said, I'd like to introduce Rabbi David Olavsky, the former Long Island director of NCSY, former mashkiach in Yeshiva So, former Magid Shir in, uh, in, in Derech, a former lecturer in Or Sameach. I have more fingers. You know, former, and they just kept going, <laughs> and it was clear by the end that I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> I had lost every single job I ever had. So... Uh, yeah, so don't feel bad. You were you were just one of the many places that woke up one day and said, "Why is he teaching here?" <laughs> that's why I, I get to do this podcast because uh, that's it. Now I get to go into your homes. I you watch me. I'm invited into your homes. And by the way, it's a two way camera. I'm checking things out. So <laughs> this is Marcus Choshech. You understand? So <laughs> see what's in the house. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I have to I have to throw in a little bit over here, and that is, of course, that since Bishalach is Parsha Shira, you'll notice everybody asks the question: How come they didn't sing uh, Oz Yashir when they came out of Mitzrayim? Oz what? Oz Oz Yashir. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Wait, what's Oz? Oz. Oz Yashir. <laughs> Oz. Yeah. Oz. Wait. So tell the story with Basil Crown with this with this song. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so. This song came out in honor of the Shabbos project, and we had to rush because the Shabbos project was already booked. The date was booked, obviously, which week it was going to happen. <laughs> right. And we quickly got the video together in the studio, two in the morning, fast, fast, put it out there for the people to enjoy. And the Shabbos um, project headquarters emailed it around the entire world, and people really got into it. And they actually asked us to perform it at the concert, the Half Dollar concert, the first year. In Melbourne. It was a really special opportunity in front of about 5,000 people. And my brother, Tony, did an amazing job. And, uh, yeah. and he, he really got the whole place into the song and the whole community got around it. And then we got an email to one of the, or one of the um, sort of assistant producers. His name is Yumi. Um, Yumi Rosenbaum is actually quite a great singer. He's got a great album out there. You should check it out. And Yumi Rosenbaum gets an email from Rabbi Pesach Kron. Rabbi Pesach Kron writes an email saying, how could you say that Shabbos sucks? And, and we couldn't comprehend what, what the question was. Like, I'm just, where, um, and, and then we understood because Rabbi Pesach Kron is American. Mm. And in America... It doesn't get much more American than Pesach Kron. <laughs> okay, yeah, of course. So, Spitz! <laughs> so, so he, said, he said, Shabbos sucks. What's happening here? How could you say? <laughs> so we had to explain. No, right, 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 he sent an email back. It was socks. It was Shabbos socks. We say socks and oh, it's pronounced oh in Australia. Australia. Right. So it's Shabbos socks. We we're sort of saying you get dressed, you put your Shabbos clothing on. Even Shabbos socks is nice to have special socks. Everything you do with Shabbos is important. All the sort of small messages in the song. And he understood it to be something else. So we quickly clarified. We jumped onto the video online on YouTube. It's called Shabbos Angels. Shabbos Angels. Malachi, Malachi Shabbos. They come. They, Almost they 30,000 uh, views. <laughs> That's only today. Wait till tomorrow. Forget about it. That's right. So, uh, and we jumped and we put a little subtitle, Aussie accent, for all the Americans. Who, uh, <laughs> they can understand. Yeah, I have to th- break this to There are a lot of them. <laughs> uh, I know you, you managed to find 5,000 people in Australia, but uh, I don't know how many of them were sheep. So, but um, it's good that a Pesach Kron, obviously, obviously it's amazing that he helped clarify. We wouldn't want anyone to misinterpret the lyrics. Yeah. God forbid. God forbid. So thank you. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting thing. I, I got a, uh email from a couple who are both hearing impaired. And they said they like to watch my podcast and it comes with uh, titles so that you can follow along, you can read along. And uh, the person thanked me for the fact that I pronounce things so clearly so that YouTube gets it right most of the time mm. what I'm saying. So uh, I hope everybody appreciates the fact that we wish I wish the rabbi would have told me this when we started, and I could have slowed it down a little bit. No, I would, if I knew that, no, I would have just translated. Started when we started. Anyway, uh, so just so how come they didn't sing Shira when they came out of Mitzrayim? How come they waited till Kriya's answer? So um, because Shira, Shira is always Shlemus. <clears throat> you sing a song when you have everything in it. An orchestra is made up of every instrument, and to make a song, which is you compose songs, which to me is amazing to be able to make the music. <clears throat> All the pieces have to fit together. And as you see, the lyrics, everything has to fit together. And until they saw Mitzrayim, Mesel Svasayam, they knew the story wasn't over. And that's why it says the Bizas Ayam 
that they took, the treasure they took from the sea, was so much greater than what they took out of Egypt. Why? Because that wasn't the real Bizas Mitzrayim. When he said you're going to go up with Rechush with great wealth, it wasn't talking about Egypt. It was talking about Yamsuf. That was the real... That's why Pesach is seven days. I asked somebody once, a women's group, I said, why do we celebrate Pesach for seven days? And she said, I'm not doing all this cleaning for one day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this, you eat matzah for a week. So, uh, if that's you come to Australia, it's going to be eight days, is that okay? <clears throat> I went to Sydney. It's fine, no, it's fine, okay. <clears throat> sure. I went to Sydney, and on Sunday, we, uh, we went down to, uh, this fellow I was staying with had a, had a boat, and he said, you see that line right over there? That's Shabbos. If you go out in your boat, yeah. outside of this little bay, it's Shabbos. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah, I had this once. I was in a place called Magnetic Island, accidentally, for Shabbos. <laughs> Is it Magnetic? I called it Russia. It's, well, it got its name because apparently when Captain Cook, I think his name was, came mm-hmm. to Australia, apparently his compass went fuzzy at that point, and they yes. thought there was some magnetic force in that region. However? However, they cannot find any evidence of any magnetic force in that region, mm-hmm. but the name stuck, Magnetic Island. Fascinating. It's a beautiful island, and when you come for Pesach, Ezra Shem will be able to visit together, and we'll do amazing things. And so, mag- I can eat hummus there. It's not. Anyway, <laughs> that's a great so, point. It's a great point. Anyway, it's a, it's Two amazing how the international deadline that moves across. Yeah, um, I, I learned the chavetz chaim, and, and for example, in, in uh, Japan. The, some some of the guys were going to Japan and, and Rav Hanach, or the Rosh Hashiva Paskin, they had to keep two days Shabbos. Yeah, I had that, yeah. yeah. Was island. In America, we have it. The, the second one is called Sunday. And uh, <laughs> that was, that's not even my joke. You know joke that was? Rosh Hashadron. He used to call it Shabbos Sheni Shogolius. It was Sunday. Anyway, so, um, uh, so it had to be complete. And, so, and Shira comes from completion. And... Uh, all I can say is this is, I hope, I hope everybody out there enjoyed this as much as I did. Um, that's it for this week. Um, if you want more information about the show, please go to rabbiolowski.com slash podcast. If you want to know about this particular show, it's rabbiolowski.com slash podcast slash 15. Uh, if you want to know about upcoming events, it's rabbiolowski.com slash events. If you would like to contact me, rabbiolowski.com slash contact. If you would like to sponsor a podcast. It's rabbiolowski.com slash podcast and click on sponsor an episode. And if they would like to contact you, Rabbi Fogelgan at Gmail for the Americans. It's Rabbi and then F-O-G-E-L-G-A-R-N, which is R-N, <laughs> G-A-R-N at gmail.com. And uh, the song is out there. It's recorded with the video. It's out there. It's called Shabbos Angels. And this is not the only song you have written. Correct. There's, there are other songs I've written, although they have not been put, not been produced yet. Um, so it could be we'll have to have you back to be yeah, able to have another song to be able to share with Klai Yisrael. Thank you. That'll be a zuchus, and that'll be, a, that'll be great. And if they want to watch this song and show it to other Yidden schools, I know a number of kindergartens around the world show this song often. Those primary schools, even high schools, play it and get into, especially the Charles Project time. I'm so, surprised you say even high schools. Because I'll tell you why I said because I got a lot of feedback from people. Since you came on Shabbos, I have watched this video many times. 29,000. And it is, <laughs> and no, it's just, it's so, it's so alive. It's so Thank much fun. It's Thank so you. beautiful. Thank you. I, really, so, I was deeply moved by this. Thank you. Thank and you. I'm, and I'm, I'm a cult of Litvak. I don't move easily. <laughs> thank you. Well, I'm really a publisher. <laughs> but, uh, the, well, the, re- the, the reason why I say primary or is, is, and even high schools is because a lot of people said that the children love the song. Yes. Maybe the adults don't admit that much like the song. I don't know. But they, but they said that so I kind of sort of got the feedback that it's a song that really um, w- um, children responded well to it. Young primary age students and so even high school and adults. It's called Shabbos Angels. Check it out. And Hopefully, with enough uh, positive feedback, we'll li- let the, we'll release the album one day. It's quite a fascinating story. The album, so it's uh, something original. It's nothing like in the Jewish in the Jewish scene that I've seen. It's very much like this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it does not exist course. anywhere in the Jewish scene <laughs> except here. This is it. Thank you so much. I want to thank the guys who uh, who performed. We're, we're out of time. Otherwise, we'd introduce each one and have everyone say a few words. We'll have to do that in future uh, future broadcast. And uh, that's it for this week. And uh, have a wonderful Shabbos. And uh, that's it. We'll, we'll see you. This is David Olavsky. This is the Rabbi Olavsky Show.